ready to jump. Here. Uh, we're starting with Luke. We're starting with Luke. Um, I don't know about you, is who here has gotten tipped on Twitter mm -hmm. in the last 24 hours via uh, Plug Wallet's new features? I'm really excited about everything that Luke is building. Luke, get up here and tell us about what you're doing. Hey. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, so I want to launch day two by giving a little bit of praise to ICP. I think that it's only fitting. And talking a little bit about what you can do on ICP that you can't do anywhere else. So a little bit of background to this. I'm the founder of Funded. Funded is a crowdfunding platform uh, on, built on ICP. Uh, I built this with my amazing team over there. About a year ago, we launched it. And oh, yeah, they do deserve a round of applause, absolutely. And um, originally, the idea was to help fund ICP-based projects. But we found very quickly that blockchain-based crowdfunding um, solves a lot of problems in traditional crowdfunding space. The first is that it makes crowdfunding tamper-proof. So it's all smart contract-based. If you reach your goal as a project creator, the funds are automatically dispersed to you. And if you don't, the funds are automatically reimbursed to all participants. Our canisters are all black hole, which means that they can't be tampered with by anyone, including the team. And that's a real benefit in crowdfunding, because we've seen a few scandals, GoFundMe, Kickstarter, that commandeer some of the funds and, and disperse it however they please. So that's obviously not a good thing. The second benefit is that we've created financial incentive in crowdfunding, which doesn't exist on, on Web2. So in our case, um, rewards are tied to NFTs, and backers can use those NFTs to claim their rewards, or they can choose to sell those NFTs and trade them on marketplaces. So there's a form of financial incentive that we've created there. And the final benefit is that it creates global crowdfunding. Um, there's no fiat restrictions, which means that you're not uh, restricted by the geography of, of your crowdfunding venture. So we launched this about a year ago. It's proven to be quite successful in ICP. We've helped to raise uh, just upwards of $750,000, the equivalent in, in ICP for project creators, so it's been really great. And then in February, when Psychedelic uh, decided to go build Fleek, we took over Plug Wallet, one of the biggest wallets on the IC, roughly 200,000 downloads across the extensions and the mobile app. So um, that's the context, that's what we're building on ICP. And, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about what makes the ICP so wonderful so amazing and unique. So this is what I like to call the highlights or the obvious stuff. Uh, it's far from obvious for anybody who isn't in the ICP ecosystem, but for everyone in here, uh, you guys already know all about these things. But I think there's certain things to highlight about each of these elements that we don't necessarily talk about enough. So the SNS, the ability to uh, have a DAO governance token for your DAP. I think what makes the SNS so wonderful is how easy it is to do. Because if you look at other chains, a lot of people are trying to, uh, to create DAO governance tokens for, for projects. But you would have to fork a chain, create your own network. And with the SNS, you just make your code open source, submit a proposal, and you're off. So it's really, really easy to turn your project into a DAO. Chain key cryptography, um, adding turbo jets to Bitcoin. It's really quite wonderful being able to transact Bitcoin uh, for so cheap and so fast. It's amazing. But again, there's other networks that might be doing this. I'm thinking of Lightning Network, for example. The benefit of chain key cryptography on ICP is that it doesn't stop with Bitcoin. We're going to see CK ETH soon, and the list goes on. We could go to CK Doge and more. The NNS, uh, overarching governance, it's, it's, I just think it's one of the most elegant pieces of governance that exists today. The reason for that is it, I can follow a neuron, so I don't have to vote. I can peg my vote to someone else. I can change it at any time. I can peg my vote on certain topics to one person and on other topics to another person. And I think it's a, a sort of a form of direct democracy on this new internet that we're building, and it's really quite amazing. And of course, the, like, probably the biggest selling point of ICP is that there's no AWS. Now, when we talk about this, I think that we, we keep reverting back to AWS and fully on-chain hosting. But I think what it really means is there's no platform dependency. We don't depend on any third party to launch our dApps 
and to keep our dApps alive. And by the way, ICP is also super fast and super cheap, uh, just icing on the cake. But this, like I said, is kind of the obvious stuff. You all know about this, and uh, I think we talk about this a lot. What we don't talk about so much, I think, is the reverse gas model and interoperability of ICP. So the reverse gas model, it makes ICP free at the point of use for users. Uh, you don't have to pay gas fees, it's all free, and because ICP is so cheap, the developer takes on the costs, and all you need is sort of a business model that makes sense in order to keep your dApp alive. Uh, and I'm gonna go into some examples later of how I think the reverse gas model um, actually has real implications for the way dApps are constructed and built in their systems architecture. But interoperability as well. I think this is one of the most amazing features of the ICP that isn't discussed enough. Um, when we talk about interoperability, I think there's a few ways we can think about it. The first is internally within a system. So all of our systems are built in a way that all of our canisters are interoperable, they're fully autonomous, uh, it's really fluid and easy to, to make them work together. The second thing is that we can make the canisters interoperable with other canisters on the IC, so third-party services. So you can plug into third-party services, create partnerships, do revenue sharing. It's really, really easy to do. And of course, Definity has also added HTTPS outcalls, which means we, we can be interoperable with Web2 services for data streams or compliance, I think David mentioned yesterday. Um, and then finally, with Chenkey cryptography. It's now interoperable with Bitcoin, soon with ETH, and I think the list will go on later. So interoperability is one of the major elements of ICP. And why is this such a big deal? Why does it make it so unique? I think for that we have to look at other chains. So if you look at ETH, um, there's an article here by Blockworks. Ethereum L2s are a bug masquerading as a feature. And I think that's basically, that sort of says it all, sums it all up. And you'll see Jan's retweet there. That is why ICP was built. Jan, of course, uh, great inspiration. I think he's amazing. <laughs> but yeah, I think this gets to the core root of the problem. L2s, what are they trying to solve with Ethereum, really? They're either trying to make it cheaper at the point of use um, for, for users, or they're trying to make it more interoperable. And these are just elements that ICP has solved. We don't need to. It makes all of these builds superfluous. So ICP really, I, I said here correcting a mistake in systems architecture, but I should have said correcting a bunch of mistakes in systems architecture. And I think it's sort of the next generation of, of blockchain and, and that's what makes it so unique. So I wanted to give some kind of real example of how all of these elements feed into a piece of systems architecture um, without hopefully boring you all too much. So this is uh, the first version of the systems architecture that we designed for Funded. It used to be called Crowdfund NFT. So back in the day, this was the Crowdfund NFT systems architecture. I'm not gonna go through it in too much detail, but what I've done instead is to highlight with the black walls uh, areas where there would be weaknesses, vulnerabilities, and things that we can't do if we were gonna build this on other chains. So if you look at the bottom there, that bottom bar, um, this is the process where we do reimbursements. So users come in, they participate in a crowdfunding campaign. If the crowdfunding campaign is unsuccessful, then they get automatically reimbursed. It's all run by smart contract, it's smooth, it's cheap, and users get reimbursed the full amount of what they put in. If we were to build this on Ethereum L1, then they would have to pay a gas fee up front, and then we would have to pay a gas fee when we reimburse them. So by the time they get reimbursed, they don't get the full reimbursement, they only get a partial reimbursement. That's one of the problems. So you could think, well, it doesn't matter, you could go build on an L2. Nope, because you're gonna end up with some problems at the top. We, you see our front end and back end canister hosted on ICP. Um, if, if we were to build this anywhere else, it would have to be hosted elsewhere, AWS or any kind of other system. And that means that there's platform dependency. If AWS decides to increase their fees, we're screwed. If they decide to ban us, we're in trouble, all the rest of it. So, and platform dependency, especially in blockchain, is something you really want to try to avoid. ICP solved that. And then if you look at the right bar, our NFT management canisters, they mint the NFTs automatically straight into participant wallets. Super easy for us to connect 
our entire canister architecture together because uh, ICP is so interoperable. If this wasn't the case, we would have to sort of host this smart contract elsewhere, probably be some elements that are hosted on AWS as well. We'd have to make extra effort for it to all be interoperable. There would be sort of hack weak vulnerabilities and weaknesses there don't exist on ICP. So what it enables is sort of these fully autonomous systems architecture uh, that's super cheap, really fast, that's interoperable. You can plug into third-party canisters, which we do a bunch, not in this case, but in other systems that we built. Uh, you can plug into Web2, HTTPS, and Bitcoin and Ethereum. So it's really, really easy to build all of these amazing structures on ICP. And that has a ton of applications across all major industries, really. I'm just highlighting a few here that are sort of starting to appear on ICP. People are starting to work on these. We've got gaming. We can build fully on-chain games with real ownership within the game. I'm thinking, in this case, of Cubetopia, probably my favorite game on ICP. But um, you know, people can own their islands fully. Um, they can transact with each other. They can cre create pools. It's really quite amazing. Gambling, is we're seeing that pop up on ICP a bunch. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer gambling, no middleman setting the odds. Uh, all run end-to-end -end on chain, no platform dependency. And non-custodial as well, which is one of the major elements of this. You look at stake.com, super successful on ETH, but that's a custodial um, system, which we could avoid on ICP. Sustainability, because everything is hosted on chain, it's really, really easy to measure how the computation of a particular DAP, uh, what the carbon impact of that computation is. And uh, Carbon Crowd, a very good friend of mine, started Carbon Crowd, and we, he's looking into optimizing computation by selectively choosing which nodes operate what computation depending on the time of day, depending on the country in which the node is operating and how that energy runs there to uh, reduce the carbon footprint of the ICP as a whole, but also of your individual DAP and your individual consumption on ICP, which is amazing. Financial services, I mentioned funded, but I think David made a very good point yesterday of mentioning Helix, non-custodial compliant uh, DEX. If you think about it again, it's you know, fully hosted on chain, but it can interact with Web2 services for KYC and for other elements of, of um, compliance. Amazing, there's gonna be a ton of applications in financial services. Media, saw a bunch of pitches yesterday for music. You can upload all assets on, on chain. They can operate with smart contracts, Web2 services, etc. cetera. Uh, trade, I think trade is a big one that we're gonna see more and more. Uh, there's the contracts between Feder Italy and Definity, which I think is sort of the landmark for this new industry that's gonna pop up. Uh, traceability of products, guaranteeing where they're from, uh, what's inside of them uh, is, is, is gonna be quite big. But this is just a few of the industries that I'm observing on the ICP, but I think the range is, is much larger. Uh, I'm looking at insurance, I think that's gonna be really interesting. I think health data. Uh, so really all major industries have applications for the kinds of systems architecture that you can build on ICP that is so unique. So it really is incredible architecture, in my opinion, and that's kind of what, uh, what I find fascinating about it and what drove me into ICP in the first place. So the question is, what are you going to build? Because we're at the early stages of this, and you know it's all yet to be built by us, and that's what makes it so fun and, and so exciting. So in that vein, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we're doing over at Funded and at Plug as well. So, What's next for Funded? Uh, it's funny, first thing I put up is integration of MetaMask and ETH, and I've just spent the past 20 minutes trying to explain why ICP is so unique. But actually, I will stop on this a second by mentioning how much uh, trouble we ran into when we integrated ETH. So from a development standpoint, it's actually quite good. There's tons of documentation, uh, test environments that you can use, so it's a little bit more advanced than ICP in that sense, just because it's had years and years to develop. But for example, for project creators that want to launch a crowdfunding campaign, uh, on ICP it's free. We don't charge anything for that to happen. On ETH, they have to pay us $140 upfront because that's how much it costs just to launch the smart contract on ETH, not the reverse gas model. Secondly, 
when users, if a crowdfunding campaign is successful, then uh, users will have to come back and pay a gas fee to mint their NFT. In the ICP case, we just mint it for them, drops into their wallet, easy peasy. And like I mentioned earlier with reimbursements, if a user wants to get reimbursed, they're not going to get a full reimbursement, they're only going to get a partial reimbursement. So we've integrated MetaMask and ETH to reach out to this new community and sort of put our model forward to them. But really, it's not as powerful as the system we've built on ICP. So what else have we got going on? Uh, we've integrated CK and native Bitcoin, so now we can do crowdfunding rounds in Bitcoin. We have yet to see the first successful crowdfunding round in Bitcoin, but we've got two in the pipeline that are quite exciting. SNS participation via funded, you'll be able to participate in SNS sales. Why is that beneficial? It means you won't have to transfer your money to your NNS account. If you've got your ICP in your plug wallet or, or any other wallet, you can just use that to participate in SNS sales. USDT and other stable coins, I'm hoping for CK USDT to come out and uh, someone to build a stable coin on ICP that we could use to um, do stable coin crowdfunding. We're doing a referral program. We're essentially saying to people, if you go out and find a company that does a crowdfunding round and is successful, you get a share of the, of the cut. Um, and we're growing into new communities. So we're trying to reach into Ethereum, to the Bitcoin network. There's something, there's a, one thing that I didn't mention here. Uh, we're also gonna be looking into the same crowdfunding model that we currently operate, but instead of NFT token launches, it's just gonna be ICRC1 or ICRC2 token launches. So like a token launch pad that comes from crowdfunding. What's next for Plug? So we took it over in February. Uh, we've integrated the ICRC1 token straight away. I'm very excited for ICRC2 as well, which is set to come out soon. In wallet swaps, um, we've done that. Fiat on ramp, very interesting. We've partnered with Coinbase to offer Coinbase Pay on Plug, and we're looking to uh, grow the range of products that we can integrate for fiat on ramps. We're looking at on ramp in India, which is like specialized for the Indian market. Moon Pay is another one, so we're going to be integrating more of those. Plug, plug mobile app and mobile authentication. We actually just released this this morning, so more mobile authentication is now live, but we had a ton of problems with the App Store. Most of our, you know, we have a lot of uh, platform dependency actually with Plug right now, because we're on the App Store, we're a Chrome extension, and we keep getting in trouble with some of our features, we have to wait for approvals, it's a headache. So we will also be releasing a uh, native front end for Plug, that'll be hosted on ICP uh, just in case as a kind of backup system because if we do ever get banned from Chrome or App Store, which is possible, it's, uh, it's gonna be an issue. So we're gonna, we're gonna host this on ICP as well on top of that. Uh, in wallet CKBTC forging, you can just send native Bitcoin to your wallet. This is out CKBTC trying to make it more popular on the ICP. Uh, in wallet marketplace, it's not really a marketplace. It's basically an on-ramp for marketplace. You just you could list your NFTs easily and buy NFTs easily straight within the wallets. Sending tokens via tweets, plug tip. I think Jesse mentioned that. We launched this yesterday. And uh, it's a small idea, but we think that it might help with user adoption. The idea is that you connect your plug wallet, you can verify your Twitter account, and then you can send tokens with a simple tweet. I'll send, I'll go at plug wallet, send plus one WICP to Elon Musk. And I don't think Elon has a plug wallet or, uh, or knows about ICP, but he doesn't have to. If I can send those tokens to him, and if he wants to come claim them, he just downloads plug, and, and, then, um, and then he gets those tokens in his wallet. So we're trying to think of ways of increasing user adoption in ICP as a whole. Smart contract wallet, we're kind of going to be rethinking the wallet now, doing a bit of a reskin to enable smart contract tech. Uh, and the benefit of this is that you can do multi-sig transactions, in-wallet collateral, borrowing and lending, etc. SNS participation, just like funded. Uh, we tried raffle uh, and games on Plug, but we ran into problems with Chrome Store, so we had to take that down. Messaging, social features, hard wallet version, ledger integration, and then the sort of ultimate idea, or like the best case scenario, would be to have some sort of payment card for Plug where you could pay for your Starbucks coffee in ICP. That would be the dream, and we're hoping to get there eventually. So I mentioned interoperability a lot, and I just want to close by talking about the idea of partnering 
in ICP. We partner with a bunch of project creators and, and companies on ICP uh, on many different levels, but first at an infrastructure level. We build infrastructure with other companies on ICP because it's so easy to integrate into their smart contract canisters, to do revenue sharing, smart contract revenue sharing. Uh, it's really amazing. We partner with IC Lighthouse, IC Dex to enable swaps in plug wallets. Um, we build a bunch of infrastructure for VaultBet where we do revenue sharing, and we partner with Carbon Crowd to help optimize node consumption and, and reduce the carbon footprint of the IC. And then we partner with a bunch of companies to help them uh, fund themselves and to, with our crowdfunding platform. These are just a few of them, and a bunch of these ones are in the room, uh, but, but there's a ton more that we've done. So, yeah, I want to, I hope that, you know, I've sort of um, helped to show some of the things that make ICP really, really unique, and definitely the reasons why I'm so excited about it, and I would encourage everybody to, to help each other and partner up to, to build this network as a whole, because uh, it's going to be an exciting few years for ICP. So thank you very much. So